Hi everyone, um, in this video uh, I want to go over a photo P and how to work with the image adjustments. Okay, So before this you should have cropped, straightened your image. You should do any cleanup using the healing tools or the clone stamp. Okay. And if you watch those videos, you'll you know that I've cleaned up the sky. Um, so so far, this one did not get cropped or straightened, but we cleaned up all of this junk, got rid of that telephone or that the um, uh, the tower that's there. Um, got rid of a couple of these cones in here, and we're looking a lot better. Okay, so now we want to work with the overall light and color. Okay, so one of the first things we're going to do is we're going to look at these adjustments here. So if you haven't put your adjustment tab in, it's easier to have these right here than going over to layer and down to new adjustment layer and picking one of those. All right. So um, if you don't have that adjustment showing up, go to window in the menu bar. Um, make sure adjustments has a check mark next to it. If it doesn't, just click on it and it will it should pop up and over here on your screen. Okay. Um, and let's just go through these again. Brightness, contrast, levels, curves, exposure, vibrance, hue, saturation, color balance, black and white, photo filter, etc., etc. Okay, we're going to mostly be working with the ones in the top row and maybe hue and saturation. Okay? Um, we're going to start with something like levels. Okay, brightness and contrast. I'll click on is great, but it's an overall um, adjustment. And we're looking to make as many kind of local or selective adjustments as possible for um, keeping everything in line and being all great and all like that. Okay. Um, so we're going to start with the levels. And if I click on levels, then we get a little dialog box opening up or our properties box. Okay. And we see a histogram here. And we've got numbers of zero representing black and 255 representing white. And then our gamma of one in the middle. So I'm going to want to, I think, bring this over. So notice how this comes down, kind of not quite to the side over there. So I'm going to want to bring this in just like there a little bit. Okay, it doesn't make a huge difference to our picture. I'm going to go to five, I think it is. Okay, uh, oops, seven is a little much. Six is fine. All right, and we can see here. Um, oops, I want to get rid of this brightness contrast I played with. Okay, we'll show you that in a second. So levels is over here. So I'm looking at my layers tab over here and I've clicked on that to demonstrate but I want to get rid of that so as I'm clicked on there I can hit my delete button on my keyboard and it's gone okay so let's go back to our levels right and notice that I'm active on this layer now because it's in lighter gray I could be on this <coughs> layer here okay so I want to be on my levels layer I also want to make sure I'm on my properties here not the mask here we'll talk about the mask later on so I brought that in so we can just see what that did. Okay, it's subtle difference there. Okay. We're gonna bring this one in just a little bit also. Okay, and you can see what that does as I slide that whoa all the way in. Okay, and so we want to just maybe bring this one in just a little bit to about there. And I think we're good with that. So I'm gonna go ahead and close this by clicking up here. Right, and we have made a little bit of an adjustment there, so it's subtle. Okay, everything's going to be a little a little subtle on on these um, on these things here. Okay, we're going to go to our um, curves, and I can do a curves layer also. Okay, so I'm going to click on curves, and curves look like this. Again, you've got a histogram down here, and we go from darks to lights here. And we've got this line that goes diagonal. We're going to try and make this line more of a curve kind of thing. So I'm going to go ahead and just click and make a point in there in the center. I'm going to make a point there. And I'm going to make a point there that I can move. And I'm going to do like one more in here, in here, in here, and in there. Okay. So now I can start moving these points around. And I can bring that up and that does something weird to the sky. I can bring that down does it something kind of weird. So I want to just get this maybe in here. I want to pull this down a little bit too. There we go. And then let me push this up a little bit. Oops. Whoa. Let me push this one up a little bit too.
Uh, that looks good without getting too crazy. Uh, I don't like my green grass was better before. Okay, so curves are subtle, subtle, subtle. Okay, you don't need to move them a ton. Okay, there we go. That's better. Okay, so I'm going from something like that, something like this, right? I'm gonna say okay, good with that. Mm, a little purple up here for my liking, but that's okay for now. Um, all right, so exposure is one okay again that I also usually skip um, because again we're doing major corrections all over. But if it's really overly bright or overly dark, you can do that. So we go really dark. We go really super crazy bright. Okay, so again, like little tiny movements are all that's necessary, okay? Um, so I tend not to use that. All right, let's close this again. Right. What you might want to do is our vibrance and our saturation. Okay. So for this, I don't know if I want to do it on everything, but let's say if we up our vibrance a little bit. Like that's nice on the hillside, right? But I don't know if I need it so much in the sky. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and adjust this to the way I like the everything there. And then I'm going to use my mask. And the mask can block out part of the effect of this vibrance to a certain area. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead now and click on my mask. Right. My mask is white, so it's showing all the effect of vibrance over the whole picture. Okay, I want to only have it show in this lower part and not in this upper part. So I am going to have black as my foreground color because I want to paint with black to block out this effect. And then I don't think we talked about the brush tool, but here's your brush tool. So I just want to make sure I'm on my brush tool. All right, we know here's where I can change up here the size and the hardness. I want to make this, again, fairly soft. I don't want really hard edges. Uh, so I'm going to go down to there somewhere, I think. And I'm going to make my brush a lot bigger. Oops. And do that right on here. There we go. Um, yeah, and you can see that I already did something by clicking there. So I'm just going to undo that. I want to go larger brush to make it a faster process. And we're going to now take that saturation away from up there. I need to close this out of my way. Okay. If you overdo somewhere by accident, like I just did, I'm gonna come back and clean that up. I'm just gonna hit in here a little bit. I think that's works. Okay, and you can see on my mask, it's showing me where I painted, where I'm blocking out this effect and where I'm showing this effect, okay? And I think I went a little too far in here, so what I can do is reverse my colors and paint with white again. So I'm just gonna hit my arrows over here, where my color picker is in my lower left, change this to white, and I'm just gonna like paint in here on that, that hillside with white to make sure I don't have black in there by mistake. Okay, maybe there's a little bit over there. All right. Now we can check um, what we where we started and where we are now. All right. If you turn these eyeballs off, we can go back to where we were there, and we can see oh, we've made some nice changes there. Okay, that have helped this picture look better. All right, but we haven't really changed what it is. Okay. Um, all right. So then we've got hue and saturation are good ones also. So if I want to again change the hue, I can change hue of these things like crazy. Ooh, that's totally weird, right? Okay, um, and we can do our saturation also. And this is also where I could totally desaturate and make a black and white. So that might be helpful there. Um, I don't think we need to change hue too much here. The only thing I want to change, I think, is maybe the um, just isolate the blues. And go into purple. Um, 
I'm looking for my sky color that I like best. Maybe just in there like that. Okay, so again, I'm going to click now on my mask. We're going to get rid of this by clicking up there. I'm going to click on my mask, and now I'm going to mask out everything down below. All right, so again, I need black, so I need to change my color picker over here so I have black as my foreground. I'm still on my brush tool. That's B. And I can make this a lot bigger, and I can just start going in here and making sure none of this is getting affected. I don't think that it was so much, but there's a little bit changing there. So I'm just gonna clean that up. All right. Um, so that looks pretty. That looks pretty good. I think um, that should do it. Those are most of the tools that you're gonna want to work with. Of course, you can always come back and do brightness contrast at this point. Say, well, I want this a little bit brighter, or maybe I want this a little bit darker like that's kind of nice like that there a little more contrast or take away a little bit of contrast all right cool and i think we're done okay so now that we're done so once you've gone through and uh, made all the adjustments that you want and you're happy with your picture so i think this is um this is pretty cool then you're going to want to do two different um things at the end here okay i want you to one um, save this as a PSD so we have all these layers and then we're going to export it as a JPEG so you'll be able to attach that in Blackboard because Blackboard does not take PSDs. Okay. So we're going to go over to File and Save as PSD. Okay, and that's going to go in, for me it goes into my downloads, I think that'll be true. And then I'm going to go to File and I'm going to go Export as JPEG. I'm going to click on that. That will open up this dialog box, save for web. Uh, you don't need to change anything here. This is your format. You already picked JPEG. Um, the size is there. Quality of 70 is certainly fine. We can just go ahead and say save. So what you want to do now is let's go ahead and look at my download folder, which I've got a bunch of stuff in there. Um, so I'm just going to pull this out. So let's pull these out. I've got this one. And I've got that one. Um, oops, stop, stop. Uh, okay, because I have stuff on my desktop already with those um, with those names. So we can just look at them here. So anyway, um, what I want to show you is if we pull those back into Photo P, what do they look like? Okay, so let's pull up Photo P one more time. I can now close this, right? And if I do Command Open and I go to my Downloads, and I go to my PSD file, spot removal PSD. Here it is. And there's all my layers because I could come back and go, oh, yeah, I don't know. I don't really like what's going on here. I think I want to put another color balance layer in. And I want to do my um, midtones. And I want to see if I can change that blue a little bit or something like that, okay? Or whatever it is you, you want to do, all right? Um, if we go and now we can open our JPEGs and we command O, downloads, and we go to my JPEG file, there's my JPEG file, okay? Looks exactly the same, nothing changed on my screen. So here are my two tabs, okay? Um, right? But notice on this one, when I'm on this one, I don't know why it says PSD up there. It's a weird thing. Um, you've got all your layers. And when we look at this one, we have nothing there. It's all just one thing. Okay. So I'm just going to go ahead and close those. Close that. Um, yeah, I know. Um, did you, no, that's okay. Um, that was because we did that other thing I didn't want on there, and we're all set. And then just to verify that when I look at my downloads, you will see a JPEG and a PSD file. I don't know why it came in as, as PSD on there. All right, so that's how to edit your photos in Photopea.